Hello, it's Sarah. And I went and got the Dina Wakely Media Journal. And I got it at Hobby Lobby. It was $24.99, but I used a coupon. 40% um, off, so that's not bad. But what I this is what I was trying to say. It has four surfaces. You have this really cool watercolor paper. It's not like a normal, I think she said she got it in Japan, and it's kind of like paper. I mean, um, fabric almost. It's like a fabric paper. It's really different. Um, you guys know what this burlap. This is more watercolor. Here's the canvas. So it's a creamy canvas. I like that. Because this almost seems like canvas to me, this watercolor paper. And then the craft. So those are the four surfaces that, that are in this journal. Now I bought the Liquitex Clear Gesso and I've already covered a few surfaces with it because I want to try the different, um, the way they react with gesso and not being gessoed. Um, I only got the one color of paint by Dina. This is her gilt, which is a gold metallic heavy body acrylic paint. And I bought a pack of these um, fine tip applicators. And you can just leave these on your paint and use them as a pen anytime you want or just squirt paint out. Um, and then I went on Amazon. I also bought these. These aren't by Dina, but I bought some um, craft tags. Um, but I went on Amazon last night and I went to Joann's. Joann's had her paints. This is $6.99 at Hobby Lobby. Amazon had them for $7 and $8.99 for more, but um, Joann's had them for $5.99. So I ordered about four different colors because I don't have heavy body paint. So I only use usually craft paint. So I wanted to see what the difference was. So I've been experimenting with that. As some of you know, I got these the golden fluid acrylics. So there's a lot of different types of media. If we're going to be doing mixed media Mondays, um, that's what I'm going to play with. I want to play with different and see what they do. So for today, I'm just going to use um, some craft paint. I have these three colors because they won't make mud and you just use your color wheel and anything that's next to each other, wherever I Anything next to each other on the color wheel is fine to use together, so um, you won't make mud. And we're going to just play a little bit. I have water here. I have a little bit of water. I want to find, I had two pages of the watercolor paper. This page I gessoed with the clear gesso. This page I did not. So I want to see how the paper absorbs, and I'm just going to use a brush. This is a little bit of a stiffer bristle because I just want to see what's going to happen and I have no plan in mind. I just want to see how the paper receives the, the uh, paint. So I've just given it a little bit of moisture in the background. I'm going to wet my brush and just start adding See how it has brush strokes? So Dina is, and I cannot do, now look, this has no gesso. No gesso on that page. And I think the paint on this side will move more. Like if I squirt this more, see look, because there's gesso there, oh this isn't a very good squirt bottle, let me get my big guy. Because there's gesso on here, the paint will move. This has absorbed into the fibers of the paper already. So that is pretty cool. Even though I've wet the surface, it's not moving. So let's go into another color. I have this um, metallic blue. Let's put and I'm just trying different brush strokes because I am a very neat painter usually. So I'm trying to be a little bit different, you know, and just see what I get. 
and I'm trying to keep now also Dina very much leaves some white space on her pages so I'm trying I'm gonna try it's harder for me but I'm gonna try and that's what I'm hoping mixed media Mondays turns into is um, now this doesn't move I mean it's it's once it's down there it's down so I'm gonna do one more color I have don't have a lot of room left like on this page hmm maybe I should dry it a little I'll try it on this page this is uh, citron green it's just a very bright green I don't know why I'm doing this. <laughs> no idea. I just felt like it. And it kind of, I don't know. I have no idea. Believe me. I'm going to do some drippage this way, I guess. If I can. And see what happens. So that's what happens. If you use gesso, your paint won't absorb into the background. I mean, now I also applied the gesso with a palette knife. That's another thing that she does because you're not going to you're going to miss some spots. So, um, the paint will maybe go like I'm seeing something right here maybe that was a part where I missed with gesso and so the paint absorbed into the paper differently um, so that's it I'm just playing I'm gonna do a couple more pages like that and then we'll I'll come back and add focal images and different things but for right now I just wanted to do, I mean there's about I don't know how many pages are in this there's a lot of pages so we can absolutely play um, and I'm just going to go, I didn't need to, but, and then I thought when this is dry, I can come back with like complementary colors. So maybe I have this cool, um, glitter paint, glamour dust, neon pink, like that would pop. Or I've been gathering up different bits and pieces of things I've already cut out. Like look at this little owl. You know, would he go on there? I don't know. This was from a calendar, an old calendar. Um, so were these boots. I have rain boots with like um, different flowers. Just circles that I've cut out of, uh, what are they? Jelly plate prints. This is a Kate Crane tag that I just I used some of it and didn't use the rest. Look, that has the blue in it that would totally tie in. So cool. So I'm trying to think about, and then I have tons of butterflies. I mean, this blue butterfly would look pretty. Look at that. Just on top of the green. And then I have this too, this blue. I could just put that. So. I want to start to think about that type of stuff because um, that's I'm just I'm just trying now here's the thing oh I have this blue anywho um, when, when I went live the other day um, everyone was saying do it Sarah style and I agree because the fact is I've been watching Dina's videos and the one thing that I have to say I, I love about her is the painterly, painterly, right? That's, that was a new word back when I was um, doing decorative painting. And it was, it just means it doesn't look like it's a decal or, you know, a tracing. It's just, it looks real, unplanned, painterly. And Dina is so painterly that it's 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 over the top for me I can't go that far 
um, it's scribbly and very playful. Um, her drawings, which I did order a couple of stamps, and I can't think, I ordered a couple stamp sets, a uh, couple of stencils, the paints. I don't know if I got one of her brushes. I forget if I did, but I have this one, uh, I'll find it. I have one of her girls. I have one stamp set of hers with the girls, some girls on it, sketchy girls. So I'm going to let these dry, and I'll come back and we'll do another page. Be right back. All right, so I'm back, and I'm going to use some yellows and oranges and pinks. I could do red. I think I might want to. No, you know what? And I'm, I keep forgetting about white because white is such a good color to use with along with this but I'm just gonna go with the colors right now this is a neon orange and I'm gonna do this canvas page I've gessoed it and so it shouldn't absorb in and I think I'm just gonna I want to brayer it on I think I think I'm gonna try that because I mean, even this paper though, it has so much texture, but I'm going to try it with the brayer. And Dina even says the paper, I mean, I'm sorry, the canvas actually shrinks up a little bit when you add the media to it. So I think I'm going to use the brayer and go with the darkest color first. Oops. Come on, little briar. There we go. And it should um, stay on the top. It shouldn't absorb in. But look at the look at the lines from the canvas. And I'm over too much. So that's a lot. I should have I should have gone gentler, but it's all right. I'm going to use yellow. I put the color too close to each other on the palette. Wow, that almost looks gold. It's shimmering. What yellow did I use? This is just called opaque yellow. And then I'm going to do a little bit of that fluorescent. This is called, oh, a neon, yep, fluorescent torrid orange, fluorescent pink. I mean, yeah, orange, I'm sorry, dur. I was looking at this pink. This is my glitter glamour dust. So let's see. And these fluorescent colors are more sheer. So I'm kind of loading up the brayer, probably way too much. Um, it's pretty loaded. And maybe just, see it is, it's very sheer. I like it. I don't really want to do anymore. The yellow kind of disappeared a little. I love that the orange is popping, but I kind of want to add the neon, but it might be a mistake. It won't be a mistake. I just don't know when to stop. That's, that's the problem. But I love the way that this canvas took the paint. And I've painted on canvas before with um, acrylics, and I've just used textile medium instead. So um, I think textile medium is more 
for if you're going to wash the item. You know, if you're, if you're painting on fabric, it actually will embed into the fibers of the fabric. I'm going to go with it. I'm going to go for it. Put a little bit of the glitter on there. Maybe we'll do it without the brayer. How should I do it? I could stencil it on, but I think I'm going to just do the brayer. I'll finish it off with the brayer and um, we'll come back to it. So these are just backgrounds that I'm just going to Wow, you can really see it. It's mixing with the regular pink. See if you look at this. My brayer rolled into the, the fuchsia and the um, glitter pink. So I have both colors. But I think I want to stop because I get carried away. Didn't want to lose the orange. I think the fuchsia, like some of it looks red actually. So let's go up and it's a very, it's not, um, I think we need white. I do think I want to put some white and I wonder, I think I want to put white gesso. And I, I think I want to do it with sponging. Now here is something I decided to do is I'm always saying I have my go-to stencils. So right in the drawer next to me, I have these stencils that I always use. So I, today I decided to go through and pick out stencils that I don't always use. And I got the brick pattern. I don't know what these are called. And these could be recollections, but there's like, it's a cool, kind of as an entangle pattern. But what I was looking for with these big circles. So I think I'm gonna add some big circles on here in white gesso. I have some big stars. And look at these, these are little critters, bugged. I think I wanna add some critters and I could put them in, you know, maybe just one coming in, you know, a couple of them. So we'll see, those are things that I'm gonna experiment with. And but for right now, I do think I want to use some white gesso because then I could probably do another layer. Hmm, I don't know. Hold on, <laughs> I get excited. I'm just putting some of this out on my palette and I'm going to sponge it through the stencil. And I just use these cosmetic sponges. Let's go off the edge a little. It's not very, oh, uh, there we go. I wanna make it a little, let me see how. Yeah, you can see it, but it's not really opaque. I kinda wanted it to be opaque, but I could come back on top of it with white paint. Oh, I just went over total orange and pink, something that was really cute. rainy day here it rained last night so hard and all of our retaining basins are filled in the neighborhood um, our I guess um, sewers the little the sewers on the side of the road go to a retaining like pond and it's overflowing it, it's just crazy it rained so hard 
So I'm doing them random. I think I'll end up putting some of those circular um, uh, jelly prints that I did. And then I'll use some caps and just make this a circle page or something. Keep it simple. I don't feel like thinking too hard today. I was sick yesterday. I Sometimes my tummy is not, it gets upset with me. So I was I had to lay down for a while yesterday, but it, it goes away. But I'm kind of chilling today. I like it. So I'm going to just stop there and let it dry. You can see them. They're subtle. But I also have like, um, you know what I'll do? Because why not? I have this other circle pencil that I just got at Hobby Lobby on sale. It's the Prima. There are different, um, I think I'm going to use white paint and see if there's a difference. Where's my white paint? See if it shows up more opaque. And I could always use any of the other colors that I already added to the page. But for right now, I think I want to just do a couple more circles. And see if this is more opaque. Doesn't seem like it. A little bit, but I don't want to go too heavy. Well, I kind of do. I kind of like the difference. See, I'm going way too thick. So I'm, I'm bleeding under the stencil, but that's okay. This is fun. Like, just have fun. And I think that's when you'll ha get the best result because you're not trying to do something. You're just letting it happen and then it's all an attitude. It's all in your attitude. That's cool. I'm going to put a little bit down here. It's cool. When you add the white I gotta put a little bit off to the side. Like kind of going off the edge. Um, and then maybe we'll let it dry and we'll move on to the craft. I cannot wait to see what the craft looks like. Do this off the edge. And maybe a tiny bit right here. Can't really get it off the edge. All right, so that's cool. And then I'll decide what I want to do. Um, but it's very, it's not covering the whole page. It's just the background. I just wanted to see what would happen. I love the color combo for sure took five minutes so then you have to decide where to add your real pops of color so and they would be complementary colors so I would be putting like where's my little box of stuff here I mean what if what would a craft card look like on there craft looks pretty cool so you could stamp on here with some of those colors to tie it in craft looks pretty cool um, but like that little owl I had where is he him he looks kind of cool on there. He fades in a little bit, but I would have to add the little bit of blues and stuff. Um, what else? Then I was thinking about adding circles, remember? So I have, I'd have to find some blue circles because I have a blue square. Um, a blue butterfly. See how they pop off the page though now? It's complementary though. This, these kind of, they, they fade in. I would need darker blues, I think. Um, something more like that. 
I have two of them. But I was going to do circles. But we could do... I mean, that's so cool. And then I could just doodle around it and stuff. So we'll see. We'll see. I have to figure that part, that part out. Like, how do I know? How do you know where to go next? That's the part that I'm not positive about. Um, my, my, usually, sometimes I have a plan. Like, you know, the ones that I do um, start to finish. It's generally th much more thought out. But right now I'm just playing with these substrates, the different substrates. So this will this will probably take a little longer to dry. I'll just put a piece of wax or deli paper over it. And then I want to find a piece of, I definitely gessoed, see I gessoed this one. I gessoed both of these. But I gessoed this um, craft. You know what colors I think would look gorgeous on this is the blue. This blue I think would look so pretty. <laughs> I just dropped it in the paint. And so it's getting, but I was right. <laughs> the blue looks awesome on there. Look at it popping off that craft. Um, so yeah, and maybe I'll apply it with the pa the palette. Let's just spread a little on with the palette. Palette knife, the palette knife, not palette. Um, so let me squirt a little out. I knew that would pop. I'll bet the green will too. I think the green will totally. So I'm just gonna do a little bit of this with my palette knife. See, I, I got it. The palette knife got in the, the white, too. Now, maybe I'll add some of the green. So, I'm just making a background, guys. This is, this is playful. This isn't with any intention, really. So... Um, if it's not for you, go go see something that interests you. But this is just for me to try a few things. So now I have that beautiful green color. And we'll do some of that. But look how they pop on that craft. Sorry about that, not sure where we left off, but I was just applying paint to this craft page with my palette knife. And um, because there's clear gesso on there, it is just stopping wherever I put it. It's not flowing or moving like it does when the, I mean, I'm sorry, it will flow, it's the opposite. I just totally said the wrong thing. Because there's gesso on the page, I can move this around. Like if I were to squirt it, it might move, but I'm letting, I want to let it dry. And you know what I'm going to do? I want to add a pop of something. Maybe yellow? I have a neon yellow. I think I'm going to go with the pink. Let's try this. And it's glitter. So it, when it dries, it should totally glittery and let's just go that's so pretty look at I mean that blue on the craft I knew it but everything, I mean, so I'm going to leave it. That's another background. I don't want to squirt it because I don't want to, I don't want it to flow all together. I want it to be, 
Um, now, you know what I did want to do though? Actually, a watercolor page that doesn't have gesso. And because the, I opened these together, I gessoed them together. So, you know what? I'm just going to use whatever paint that I have on the palette here. So, I have some yellow. But because of the gesso, it will let me let me just let it all squirt it. I am not used to drippage. So that is different for me and it's fun. So I'll just let that. I kind of want some drippage over here, so I need, I'm going to purposely do it. And look, what you're seeing is where the gesso did not hit, there's a difference. You can totally see that with the yellow. That is so cool. So I'm going to put a little bit more yellow and let it drip. And, you know, the thing about different paints, too, is the pigment, right? So say that there's, I mean, this is craft paint, and I think I'm getting a nice amount of pigment. Um, like, these drips have color in them, but the better the, pi the paint, the pigment is going to go, like, you know, so look at that. That's just the way it needs to be right now. I'm not really trying to change that. I might just leave it just like that. Well, and one more thing right here. I needed a couple, couple drips over there. And a little more pigment. So I'm just adding more pigment to flow down. So it's kind of pooling at the bottom. But I like it. So I'm going to let those dry. And maybe that's it for today. Maybe I'll finish some of them off. I'm going to figure it out because I really don't know where I'm going. I just wanted to show you guys that there's this. Um, I didn't do the burlap. That's the one thing I didn't do. Um, Dina uses the burlap as kind of a pegboard. She will tack. Um, see, I need, really need to let these dry. But she will tack uh, tags to it. So, you know, but... I think I could totally paint on this. You can do anything, like she said. And I haven't stamped on here yet at all. You could stamp on this. You could do anything that you normally do to any other substrate. You can do to all these surfaces. And that's um, what she, she wants us to explore with this um, media journal. So um, I hope that was helpful. And I will be back for Mixed Media Monday. We're hoping to go live and for me to be able to film um, from my iPhone. Um, so that should be fun. All right. So I'll see you then, guys. Thanks for watching. Hello. It's Sarah. And look what I just did on a piece of the burlap. This is the Dina Wakely Media Journal. I just had a video up about playing with some of these pages and I didn't do a burlap piece. And I wanted to see what would happen. So I just started playing around. And mainly I used very stiff bristle brushes. I have this one. This is, um, and see, I'm a painter. So I've had, I have brushes in my stash from forever ago. And like things that I bought at classes. This is the Genesis Scrubby, a number eight. And so that's what I did. I just scrubbed color 
And then to outline it, I use this Peel Off China Marker by Sharpie and just kind of made lines where, you know, so that you're, you can, it separates it enough that you know the shape of the leaves, but it really doesn't show up that dark. What do you think? I think it's so cute, and that's burlap. Look, it's completely see-through. Huh? Yeah. And then, you know, my son's a little big. I went crazy, but that's because I just started with yellow, and I didn't know where I was going. And then, all of a sudden, it was a field of daisies. So we'll be able to play. I'll create something else on a piece of this burlap. Um, but you know what you could do? Then you could take your butterflies or your birds and your, you know, and you could pin it to that. Just pin it to that. OMG. Does that look so cute? So just a regular butterfly. We could pin, I have big butterflies, so if you, you know, there's so much. Your imagination could just, yeah. I mean, super cute. All right, you guys. So I just wanted to share that. Thanks for watching.